What's up, you two? Two more, two? I want to do a video about the Faraday cage. And I'm sure there's a lot of people already know about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure there's a lot of people that would love to know about what happens with an EMP event from, the, say, a nuclear event or a coronal mass ejection, CME, from our sun. Now, fortunately for the, the EMP, you don't have a whole lot of time. You, you, in fact, you have no time whatsoever to prepare for such an event. You, you'll have to have your stuff already uh, put away. But if you are uh, preparing for a CME, is not is, is nearly as, as you got a lot more time to, to, to tell, especially the further south that you live. Uh, the energy comes in through the, the poles, which is what we see as the auroras, and uh, during a, a really extreme solar storm, the uh, auroras can be seen, well, they have been seen as low as Cuba in, in uh, 1856, or, or, and, and in the 80s they were down in Florida when we had a big solar storm, I think it was 81 or 82, burned out some transformers in Canada. So it gives you an idea that the, 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 the northern lights will travel way further than the raw electricity that, that you know, the high amperage that's going to fry components. So, you know, for somebody living in the southern U.S., the, the northern lights would have to nearly be to the equator before, but, but, but I, I say that, you know, that ain't much further than, than Cuba to begin with, so... Uh, it, if we had transformers, I'm sure in Atlanta, Georgia, would have had problems in 1856. They had them all the way down to where well, they had telegraph lines all the way to Washington, D.C., and they were able to transmit, even though they unplugged their power generators or battery sources, they were still able to transmit through the wire running through the lines outside. And what I got here is a little mock-up, a little generator mock-up, and, and just a, a home, an average home uh, with a you know, a breaker box in it, and, and what essentially is, the, what Nikola Tesla did was was change from our, our usage from DC over to AC, and by doing that, he was allowed to use the Earth as the ground, as one side of the circuit. This eliminated a lot of extra wire, it eliminated a lot of problems, and it did make it very dangerous because you had to have very, very high voltage in order to travel those long distances which you could not get from a DC source. However, the power companies can, can protect their equipment simply by unplugging it from the grid. The danger comes from the energy coming in our atmosphere induces itself into that wire, the miles and miles, thousands of miles of wires. They have no insulators on them whatsoever. They, uh, that electricity is going to hit that wire and it's going to do one thing. It's going to hunt a ground rod wherever the closest one is. Uh, if they disconnect the power line, the circuit from the generator, then the current cannot flow through to that ground anymore, or it cannot flow through their uh, generator. It would be wise to, leave, to, 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 to just connect those together to the ground and leave, leave that off, but I'm sure they haven't done that. would count on them. At any rate, you also have a ground outside your home, dri driven into the ground outside your home, you generally around where your meter is. But this hooks to the third plug in the bottom of every one of the plugs in your house. That electricity in that wire will hunt that ground rod right there. So all you have to do to kill that circuit is simply cut your switch, kill your breaker. And you can eliminate all that excess energy from the lines going into your house. That's the number one thing you need to remember, and you'll have several hours to know to go flip your breakers off. In fact, the power company will probably cut theirs off first. That doesn't mean you don't. You, you still need to go and cut your breaker off to, to, to break that circuit from outside, because that's where it's going to come from. And we'll take a look over here at uh, we we'll just I made up a little, another little. Model here, we got a microwave oven set up on a board here, and it's just this regular microwave oven. It's all put together you know, just like it came out of the microwave itself. We got a transformer and a capacitor, start capacitor for the magnetron, which is uh, which is really just a vacuum tube with, with magnets on both sides of it. 
this uh, transformer takes it from 110 volts up to about 2,000 volts, and then that that magnetron takes it up into the tens of thousands of volts. High high frequency will will actually travel through the ambient air in this room, or inside the microwave oven. I'll try not to talk when I turn this on, but you'll see that this is a regular neon bulb. These bulbs are neon. It's the same type of gas that's in the auroras, nitrogen, and then you add other gases to get colors that you want. At any rate, this is this is the same basic principle as the uh, the neon bulb. If you turn this on, you see that it lights that bulb because electricity is the only thing that can do that. But, you know, in microwaves are electricity, it's wireless energy. So you can you can use all kinds of conductive materials to block that energy, and and if you encase your components in in you know, protective materials, then you can protect them from being fried. Cell phones, I mean, well, this this room we're in is a is a, a aluminum building, and it's called what they call a poor man's Faraday cage. You can ground all four corners to, you know, grounding rods outside and make sure nothing inside this room is touching the metal wall so that it doesn't pick up that current. That current has somewhere to go. It hits the building, goes around the walls, and goes down into the ground. So the only place it's going to go is the ground. And if you turn this on, I'll show you. Take any piece of aluminum, cuts it right off. Just take this piece of plastic, for instance. This is just a piece of uh, Lexan with the cover still on one side. It has no effect. It will not stop the electric current. Again, we'll take a piece of wood, a piece of wood here. And again, the wood has no effect. The electricity passes right through it. But even a mesh, a wire mesh, of uh, this is aluminum wire too, is, is, is highly reflective of, of energy. It will not let energy pass through it. Shuts it right off. And uh, if you're going to save smaller components inside your home or somewhere, you know, in a small, you know, a tin box, a tin box works good for like iPhones or telephones, cameras, whatever. You need to make sure you wrap whatever your electronic equipment is in static proof bags, plastic. And then you can place that inside that right there. You close that up and it's perfectly protected. Any type of take a box like just stick it in there. You can protect about anything you want simply by doing that right there. No ground whatsoever. And again, this this is a highly reflective. Any type of conductive material will uh, block that that energy. So again. Immediately feel heat on this uh, piece of metal, and you can't even even a uh, even tin foil will stop the uh, just one strand of it. That's right off. Uh, any problem? So I hope I hope that helps quite a bit. If there's any questions, please feel free to comment in the box down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Peace and love. Big heads up.